We live in a world ruled by tyranny, where knowledge is suppressed and ignorance is glorified. A world where propaganda and misinformation travel the airways at the speed of lies. But in the midst of the violence and chaos, a great awakening is taking place. And as the media empires continue to collapse, a new network is forming. A network of truth. A network of courage. A network of awareness. Peace and greetings. You are now tuned into the Network of Awareness podcast radio station, where we examine current events, politics, health, finance, and topics of cultural relevance in America and throughout the world, while bringing you insightful interviews with guests that will both educate and inspire you. And now, your host of the Network of Awareness podcast radio station, Aura the Yes, peace and greetings, people. This is Or the Information, unless you tuned in to another live broadcast on Wisdom Wednesdays. That's right, we're doing a second one because we had to catch up for the week, man. Um, some of the pre recorded episodes I wanted to fall back on as far as the interviews. So there'll be more interviews next week. And of course, we'll have an a interview for tomorrow morning that'll be a pre recorded show. It's going to be a show on temperance with Brother Kadar from the BOCC. And uh, we're going to start closing out on this uh, Spiritual Fire and Fellowship series where we're going to start focusing more on other different types of themes and series moving forward. But I have to tell you, this Spiritual Fire and Fellowship series has been pretty phenomenal, if I say so myself. So I'm very much looking forward to um, doing more shows like this in the future. But of course, we got to switch it up and give the listeners some different things to listen to. But we always got to focus on the most high, right? And uh, today's show is The Light is Within You. I'm going to talk about a lot of different things today, honestly, like I really am. I'm not going to just focus on one thing. I'm kind of going to go off into different types of uh, subject matter and go off into different tangents today. So this is going to be a really thought-provoking but a real chill type of vibe today for this broadcast. And I'm just going to speak my mind on a couple of things, tell you some of the things that have been going on with me in my my life, Uh, even some of the things that have happened recently with me. And um, I'm going to be somewhat transparent today And just let the listeners know that, you know Faith is our test And as long as we're here in this realm called Earth We're going to have to go through the motions But just remember that the light is within you And when you understand that And when you can live in the present There's always an opportunity for a new beginning And that light that's within you That image that you was created in of the most high which that which is and always will be that everlasting light that which doesn't have a name it just is we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a little bit but we're just gonna chop it up and 
Let's just have some interesting conversation. Or should I say, I'm going to have an interesting presentation when talking about experience and the things is that the things that we go through in this worldly world of things. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, you tuned into the network of awareness and you're listening to Bellboy by my brother Lincoln. Yes, you know how we do. We always got these original fire beats. So let's let this beat rock out for a second and I'll be right back. Yes, welcome to the Network of Awareness, people. This is Or the Informationist, host and founder of the Network of Awareness. And yes, I'm using the Spreaker Recording Studio app today. You know, I figure I'll use it, even though it's got a hell of a lot of white noise. But uh, what I what I usually do now is, because it has so much white noise, I just basically like, um, you know, I'll once I do the live broadcast, I put it in private mode. And I process it through Logic Pro X to take out all the white noise because I can't stand hearing any type of little minor white noise, background noise. I think it's just so unprofessional. But I do like the settings that the speaker has when it comes to muting your mic. Very easy. And it does have a built-in recording, um, I guess... It has a built-in equalizer that's pretty freaking good. So when I do process it and I put my mastering tools on the on the final recording, it comes out pretty nice. And it's a lot easier to set up the artwork. Um, of course, I don't have people in my chat room that come in no more. You know, ever since um, I disengaged from a lot of people and a lot of people pretty much flat left me, which was good. Because that just showed people's true colors, you know, these cultic personalities and people that believe a lot of nonsense without even, you know, investigating or, you know, just, you know, people, people are stuck on that complexion shit, man. And I'm so happy that I'm not on that bullshit. Never really have been, you know what I'm saying? And I'm grateful that I'm not. I'm grateful that I grew up in uh, the melting pot of culture in New York City. And I'm not ignorant, you know, and I also understand that there's no such thing as race, but it is what it is. Um, I'm grateful to be alive. Um, my platform is always growing. Um, shout outs to everybody on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and shout outs to my Patreon. Shout outs to my Supercast people. Appreciate y'all all. And, uh... Let me tell you a couple of things that happened to me recently. So now that I'm coming over just 2,000 followers on TikTok, once you go over 1,000, you can do live shows. So this is, I did my third live show today. And I was having some great, you know, uh, conversations with people in the chat room. And, you know, my TikTok followers, man, a lot of them are mad on point, man. Like they're not stupid people. Um, they're very intelligent. They know a lot about the science appliance. And by the way, we're going to talk about the different names that have been given to the science appliance, a.k.a. you know, the vaccine and other things. 
when you, if you know what I mean. I got to speak real cryptic because let me tell you what happened to me. I got a little too comfortable and I forgot that I live in the United Shenanigans of America. So what wound up happening to me, people, is I'm doing this TikTok live. Now, I mentioned I was talking cryptically when it came to the science appliance and uh, we, you know, we, we were discussing about different names and I'm going to discuss some of these names that people have given to the science appliance. But, you know, I started, you know, I talked a little bit about the synthetic people, you know, the ones that claim to be something that they're not and like to take um, all different types of uh, pharmaceuticals to try to claim that there's something that they're not. We're not going to mention no names, Um, but it's just getting crazy, people. And what I'm doing with this new website is that I'm going to have my own section to post my own live or not should I say live but pre-recorded videos that you can watch directly from my website and I'm going to start doing that not not just to gain more traffic but honestly it's like I have to and yeah I'm going to get on rumble and I already got in the bit shoot account and I'll distribute my videos on there as well but honestly people I'm going to have to do these presentations on my website video podcasting And just go all out because it's only going to be available on my website. And I'm figuring out that that's pretty much my best option in regards to the position that I'm in. Now, granted, I'm still going to be doing my podcast. But when I do like the real like no holds bar and, you know, where I could use the V word and other words that normally I get flagged or shadow banned or censored or suspended for. On different platforms or even on my podcast where it gets shadow banned and routed um, to different places or doesn't or I don't get credited for the downloads that I'm getting. I mean, you name it, I go through it, right? So I said, you know what? Since I'm building a new website and it's going to be a little bit better than what I've had before, right? Because we're always upgrading. I'm like, I might as well now that I have the opportunity to post these different videos and have a tab of these videos where I'm podcasting through my StreamYard app. I said, I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to do that because that way I can just really just let loose and not have to curb or kind of walk on eggshells or speak cryptically when I'm talking. And i.e. I'm doing the live TikTok today. Everything is going well. You know, I had over 52 likes. I had over 300 and I think it was 46 viewers. Everything is going smooth. And then all of a sudden they just cut me off because they said I was saying hate speech. And it just so happened when I was talking about what my thoughts were on Andrew Tate. And all of a sudden, boom. Now, it doesn't specifically say why they cut me off. They just said that the the that I was utilizing hate speech. I appealed it. They responded within 15 minutes and denied the appeal. So now my account, as far as going live, is suspended until January 11th. Which is crazy, but it is what it is. I mean, what are you going to do? And I'm just so, people, I'm so exhausted from social media censorship. It's like, who gave these, like, these people are virtual governments. That's all they are. Who gave the damn right to social media platforms to decide who could say what? And it's like, they've turned into the virtual governments of the world, man. And they dictate what people could say. And what's crazy is that if I was saying some off-the-wall nonsense, some dumb shit, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a hell of a lot of attention. And I'm not going to get censored because I'm, you know, I'm giving fuel to the propaganda fire. That's all I'm doing if I start talking about dumbness or if I do video podcasting and do these stupid video podcasts. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, there's people that have really great people on this show and they they got large numbers. But, you know, one thing I noticed about YouTubers 
is that they're a funny bunch, man. Especially like the people that got the, you know, nice following. Not even like the real big time people, but just the people that have been around for a minute. They're real like suspect, man. And it's funny because I still to this day have been yet to be able to get a guest that's directly from YouTube. Anytime I try to co- send correspondence or message to anybody that's on YouTube, they never respond to me. And I guess it's because they look at my platform and they're like, ah, nah, you know, he he speaks about certain things in a certain way and I'm not down with that. And something you notice, like even the people that swear that they're in this truth community and they have these YouTube channels, they're very diplomatic in the way they go about their speech because they're so dependent on YouTube. They're making money off of YouTube, so they make sure that they stay within the parameters. And I'm telling you right now, even though this show right here is getting distributed to YouTube, it's like, I'm tired of YouTube. It's like, you can't say nothing on there. And now the situation with TikTok, I'm like, you know, the only people who haven't really flagged me, I think they flagged me like twice since I've been on there, is IG. But I think what IG does is they don't even flag. They just shadow ban. And that's why you don't, a lot of times, you know, you have a lot of followers or and then you don't get a lot of likes and all this other nonsense. It's like, you know, just give me my own website and I'm just going to build from my website and I'll use the social media platforms to promote what I got going on. But I'm not trying to make a living off of YouTube. I'm just not. There's such a suspect company, man. You know, that just the whole entire social media industry is so suspect. It's like, who the hell gave you the right to decide what people can say? I'm telling you, this virtual government is getting worse and worse and worse. And I pray to the Most High that the Most High does something to throw a monkey wrench in these people's platforms and that we find a better way to have freedom of speech and do what we do and for right now having my website and and having that become the hub for everything is the best route to go unfortunately that takes a lot of time to build up a website which obviously I got the time but you you know you got to use these platforms to let people know who you are because most people let's just keep it real most people are conditioned to going to YouTube most people now are getting conditioned to these YouTube shorts now. And that's another thing is that they're messing with the uh, the attention span of people. So it's like most people don't want to watch a video that's more than 60 seconds long or 90 seconds long. It's like, damn, if you, if you could get somebody to watch a 10-minute video, which there are people who do that, but damn, it's, it's far and in between because everybody wants that instant gratification. That instant instant overload to the sensory and then go on to the next thing. It's like the virtual governments, a i.e. social media, is developing a whole entire younger generation of ADHD. Where people can't pay attention long enough to actually grasp a concept or to actually understand something in, in, in its entirety. It's freaking ridiculous. So that's pretty much what happened to me today. I was doing a live broadcast and then, boom, it just shut off. It's like somebody just turned off the lights and then it's like, oh, you've been suspended. I'm like, damn, bro, this is what it's like. But I'm just grateful that at least I have the opportunity to go live because you couldn't go live until you get over a thousand followers. And now I'm closing in on 2000. So it's going pretty well. I'm doing it organically. I have not spent one marketing dollar to build my um TikTok platform like I did for my Instagram. And what I'm noticing is in my opinion TikTok is way better than than Instagram. Instagram is becoming very like ugh. Instagram is real fucking bougie to me, man. It's real nonsense. Like it's so stupid sometimes. There's a lot of still a lot of great information on there, but Instagram's got a funny bunch too, man. 
is becoming very and I, and I think that part of it is because there's that battle between Instagram and TikTok. They're really trying to the governments are really trying to ban TikTok because it comes from China. And they feel like China's using it as a propaganda war machine and rightfully so. What do you expect them to do? But at the same time, I think one of the reasons why um, the TikTok algorithms work out for me, too, because I, I just had a post not too long ago that, that's now over 60,000 views. I had another one that's over 30,000. I got another one that's over 20. So things are popping. But I, I, I feel like because of what I talk about, it's interesting. And this is just a theory. I can't say this is a fact. But I feel like what I talk about. When it comes to the United Shenanigans of America, I think China likes that. So they kind of promote me because I'm kind of, to a certain degree, anti-American. <laughs> to a certain degree. You know what I mean? And uh, it is what it is. And I'm just grateful that I'm aware. I'm woke. I, and that that was the uh, topic of discussion. What does it mean to be woke? And... Uh, this dude that was with this girl that came into my life, he said it means to be aware. They were younger people. And she was wearing a mask on. I, I'm like, I don't know what's up with these people that wear these masks over their face. I'm not talking about COVID masks. I'm just talking about these like, you know, ski mask or what I call robber's mask over their face. So they only see their eyes like they cover their face. It's, it's starting to become a trendy thing. Where people cover their face. So it's, it's, it's all the young people. It's kind of dumb to me, but it is what it is. You know, everybody wants to be a superhero these days. But yeah, people, that's what happened to me. And it just so happened when I was talking about Andrew Tate. Um, Something else that happened to me is I had to go to court. And of course, court is through Zoom now because, you know, Basically, my my daughter's mom's owes me money. She owes me over ten grand, um, because you know I was taking care of my daughter when she wasn't, and she was obligated to pay child support, and she never did. And it's just crazy how I, I don't really care about it, but they're gonna hold her accountable for it. But they're not really doing it the way they would do it if it was something that happened to me or to another man. It's like. The way they go about enforcing child support for men is very, very different for women. And it's just interesting how this woman has completely disrespected the courts of New Jersey because that's where they're being held. And she just never gets held accountable. So I'm hoping that this uh, this adjournment, I think they adjourned it to this Friday, I'm hoping that finally we come to a resolution and I'm just going to be like, hey, either I get my money in a lump sum or she could just, you know, wait till she goes to jail and figures it out. Because I really don't want to be getting payments for the next 10 years, you know what I'm saying, and have to deal with this with this uh, low life. So I'm hoping that everything works out. People say your prayers for me because I really want to be done with the state of New Jersey as much as possible. Even though I'm pretty much am at this point, but I want to fully be completely done with these demons. You know, um, it's just interesting how ever since the since the caca, you know, the caca, you know, you know what, and the uh, the the plant emix, the the aca plandemics. Ever since they've come out, it's like everybody wants to get real lax in their jobs, especially the municipalities. This thing with Zoom is so arbitrary. And what's interesting is I know when you're in front of a court, everybody gets to hear your business when you're in front of the judge and they're sitting there. But I feel like it's very intrusive even more when it's on Zoom. And I got to tell you, when I was on this Zoom call, I saw a lot of things in a very short period of time when it comes to the child support system and just coming to court for custody and all that because I was watching all these different cases before mines came up because I was like, I was literally the last person. 
And of course, my my child's mother never showed up, you know, and I and she hasn't been. But I saw some very interesting things. I actually saw a case with a gay couple. It was a black dude and a white dude. And it was like a custody battle over the child. And I thought that was very interesting. It was like <laughs> Jersey. Let me tell you something. New Jersey, when it comes to the synthetic people and when it comes to, you know, the alphabet gang, boy, is it one of the most liberal states that exists within the United Serpents of America? It's a it's a shit show over there. So I saw that. I thought it was insane, but it is what it is. Then I saw this one woman. Oh, people, let me tell you. She had to be in her late 20s, early 30s. Baby mama, right? Or had had two baby daddies. Obviously, she's in court with one of them. I guess the first one. He has custody of the son. And... You know what she did? She was wearing a mask while she was in her house on the Zoom call. I was just like, can you get any more pathetic? And I I just, I, I wanted to unmute my damn microphone so bad and just be like, take that damn mask off, dummy. But, oh man, the level. And then, of course, when she started talking, I'm like, oh, it makes perfect sense why she's wearing a mask. And, oh disgusting and I, I i wanted to tell the brother like yo whatever you did to get custody of child i see why and then there was this one between these two couples that one was saying that the the son was being manipulated by the father then the father was saying that the son is being manipulated by the mother me personally when i heard both stories the father sounded more believable and the reason why i say that is because the mother She just gave me the impression that she's a narcissist, a covert one. And the way she approached the judge and once she started not getting her way, like a true narcissist does when they go, when they don't get their way, they act like children. Um, She started playing the, the, the crocodile tears game with the judge. She was like, please, but you can give me more time and I can figure things out. And And, oh, the judge was a woman, and I'm just so happy that the judge wasn't, like, really going for that. And I was like, oh, praises to the most high for that because I'm like, this crocodile tear, you could tell it was fake. And it's like, as soon as she realized that she wasn't going to get her way or actually have the judge back her on what she was requesting because there wasn't enough circumstantial or substantial evidence to prove that what she was requesting was valid. Oh man, she went right. I was just like, this is pathetic. Overall, I'm just looking at the way things are done and I'm just like, I'm so happy that those years of drama are behind me because it. I don't know if, if the system has gotten worse or better, but it's pretty much the same to me. But It's just crazy how the municipalities, when it comes to the courts and all that, they really just like, it's all about money. When you really start looking at it with your spiritual eyes, they try to make it seem like they care about the welfare of the child and and all these morals. and, And it's all nonsense. At the end of the day, it's about money, money, and more money. Now, what's interesting about this situation I'm going through, here I am, old over $10,000, but yet, when I owed $500, you know, I had freaking sheriffs coming to my house, coming to arrest me. And this was back, you know, in 2004. And then here we are in 2023, and this, this person still hasn't, the only time they've paid is when the money was forcibly taken out through either taxes or from a paycheck, which lasted for about a good two months. And I never saw money after that again. I.e., that's why I'm old. So much money, right? 
But it is what it is, people. I'm actually just happy that I don't have to see this person face to face and do the the visitation and the exchange at a at a remote location and all that other nonsense I used to have to go through. I used to have to drive to a rest area on the Garden State Parkway. And then I had to meet her and then she had to drive. And she always finagled it to where she does less driving. And the only thing that was a saving grace for me is that I moved to Rockland County. So I was at the last exit in, in the Garden State Parkway coming into New York. So that helped a, out a lot compared to when I had was living upstate. And then I was be two and a half hours, two hours on the damn road. Opposed to dropping it down to at least an hour. You know, and that's an hour each way. So it'd be like two hours opposed to four hours. But let me tell you, people, if you're in relationships right now, you better be very, I'm talking about extremely wise and discerning on who you have children with. You better make sure that it's it's a good situation. And you. the only way you're going to know that is with time. Don't rush into anything. And don't be having unprotected sex if you're not ready to take care of children. Just don't do it because you might wind up getting somebody pregnant that you should have no business being in a relationship with. Because just the the shenanigans that I saw in court today, it's just like there's nobody, there's not a lot of people in society these days that are approaching relationships in a manner that's responsible. In a manner where you're really going to develop respect and love for a person. A lot of these relationships are being developed in cardinal ways. And that's why they wind up being failed relationships. But uh, it is what it is. Um, You know, I, I, I see how when it comes to society where there's just there's so much going on these days people like if it's not one thing it's another and speaking of that you know i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up this smoke and mirrors media um uh presentation on what's going on in the senate congress and all that and i want you to pay close attention to this because this is where i left off this morning So I wanted to start off where I left off and this is not going to be a long show, but let's just, you know, let's dive into the whole political arena into the United Shenanigans of America. And let's talk about the uh, Pied Pipers of Propaganda, which is our government officials. Let's go. New Congress where top Republican Kevin McCarthy is still struggling to to get enough votes to become speaker. A chaotic kickoff for the GOP as they take back control of the House. Garrett Hake now with late details for us. How are you feeling about the vote? It's not the kind of history Republicans were hoping to make. Tonight, for the first time in 100 years, failing to elect a speaker of the House. A speaker has not been elected. On Jeff, ballot? A speaker has not been elected. After ballot? A speaker has not been elected. The chaos, the result of a bitter battle between Republicans, a small but stubborn faction of right-wing members voting against party leader Kevin McCarthy. People ask me, what do you want? I want the tools or I want the leadership to stop the swamp from running over the average American every single day. McCarthy projecting confidence this morning. I'm not going anywhere. I will always fight to put the American people first, not a few individuals that want something for themselves. But also predicting a drawn-out process. McCarthy, is there any scenario in which you drop out of this race? No. McCarthy had already made major concessions to the rebel Republicans who were pushing him for prime committee seats, commitments to vote on specific legislation, and rules changes, including some that would make it easier to oust a speaker later. With the House constitutionally bound to elect a speaker before taking up any other business, rank-and-file Republicans, the vast majority of whom backed McCarthy, growing frustrated by the small group of holdouts. If I didn't know any better, it's like the Democrats paid these people off. Let's pay them off. Let's make it look like the Republicans can't govern and don't deserve any gavels whatsoever. 
That's what it makes it look like. For much of the day, top Democrat Hakeem Jeffries actually had more votes for Speaker than McCarthy. But Republicans hold the narrow House majority and the only real path to electing a Speaker, if they can agree on who. So, Garrett, it appears they're heading now for a fourth round of voting tomorrow. But are the Republicans getting any closer to consensus? No, Lester, they're actually farther away. McCarthy losing 20 Republican votes on the last ballot tonight. We can only afford to lose four. Also tonight, former President Trump declining to stand by his endorsement of McCarthy, telling me in a brief interview, we'll see what happens. Lester? All right, Garrett, thank you. In so there you have it. You know, it's interesting how there's so much inner turmoil between this Republican and Democrat nonsense divide and conquer modus operandi that they have going on. And it's so obvious that this is just political drama. This is theater, people. This is nothing that we should ever... We can't... People, we cannot take these politicians seriously. I think it's so irresponsible to do so. But what's interesting, and it's with a lot of Americans, but primarily those of... Uh, that are considered Caucasian or white, so-called. They're the ones that really feed into this. But you you have people of all different nationalities endorsing this this bullshit with when it comes to government. Because at the end of the day, this is all a big show. It's all the the move. You know the the TV show that I thought it was one of the best shows ever was House of Cards with Kevin Spacey. I mean, damn, you want to talk about a good show? Woo! That show was showing you how they really get down in, in, in when it comes to the political arena. I love that show. Matter of fact, just talking about it, I feel like watching it again because it was it was just so good. But what's interesting is that when you see this type of behavior amongst the people that we supposedly elect to run a government that's in favor for making our lives better and doing the right thing. It's like they are constantly showing you that it's not even about you. It's about their own game. It's about their, you know, uh, filling their egos. It's about vanity. It's about who can make the other person look a certain way so that they can get ahead. And then at the end of the day, they're all in cahoots with each other. They all have these little subgroups that are all tied in with each other. And they don't matter whether they're Republican or Democrat. Because when the lights and the cameras are off and the recordings are off and, and they're not being watched, they're all best of friends. And they're all laughing their way ass. They're laughing their asses over to the banks because they, you know, they, I have yet to see any politician that really comes through on what they say they're going to do. And the only politician that I have some respect for that I feel like he does good work is Ronda Don DeSantis out here in Florida, because at least our governor here in Florida doesn't go with a lot of the propaganda when it comes to the caca, you know, when it comes to the academic, <laughs> that's a new word I came up with, the academic, it's the academic. You know, when it comes to that type of stuff, he just don't go for it. So I do appreciate that because my life could have been a lot worse than it actually was when the pandemic happened. But actually, my life was great when they was doing that major shutdown and there was no people on the road and hardly anybody at restaurants. And oh, man, it was the best time of my life. I was going to all the spots. I was going to all the restaurants. I was going to the bar, having my IPA beers and. You name it, I was doing it, and I was having a great time. Now, obviously, the bartenders and the waitresses, they weren't, you know, they. I used to tip them really well at that time because I knew that they were struggling, but I was having a great time. You know, they were like, oh, it sucks, you know, because we're not making no money. But I thought it was phenomenal not being around a lot of people. The level of peace of mind when I would go out during that time was... I never experienced anything like it. Probably will never experience anything like it again. Because I, I, I truly believe this too, people, is that they're going to try to do another shutdown this year. But, and I could be wrong, so don't quote me on this, but I really don't think people are going to go for a second shutdown. Now, I've had some of my, my uh, you know, 
my my people within my circle tell me that it can possibly well happen and people will do it again and there'll be good puppets and all that. Yeah, maybe some of them, but there's going to be a lot of people that are going to they're going to bring about a lot of resistance if they try to shut this place down again. I just don't see that happening. I don't see Americans being like, yeah, you want us to stay at home for two weeks? Okay, nah, not happening. But I could be wrong. I I just really think they're going to intensify this winter weather wars crap. And that's another thing, people. We got more bad weather coming through. And, And this is all by design, right? All by design. And let me pull it up here because I I believe I do have the video about this weather. And I want to pull it up here. I want to make sure that I have it. And let's see. Let's see if I could pull it up here. This oh, there's something else I wanted to play too when it came to these people on YouTube. Because there's that I wanted to play something from that podcast Valuetainment. But I want you to listen to this guy. This guy is really on point about our weather pattern systems. So check this out. This is this is really interesting and even wintertime tornadoes. It's All right, so let's bring it back. So check out what he says. This, this guy is really on point. After the coldest Christmas in decades, a huge warm-up is about to begin across the eastern U.S. And at the same time, a relentless train of storms is setting up across the west coast that could lead to over 10 feet of snow in the mountains. When these two air masses meet in the center of the country, things will get chaotic with a chance for more widespread snow, damaging winds, and even wintertime tornadoes. It's really crazy to think about how just a few days ago we were dealing with one of the cold oldest Arctic outbreaks of a lot of our lifetimes so far. 28 people are dead in Buffalo, New York alone, as this was one of the worst blizzards they have ever seen. The storm as a whole took the lives of 89 people, including citizens from Canada, Wisconsin, Ohio, and even Tennessee and Mississippi. And now, almost immediately after that, we are warming up dramatically across a lot of the hardest hit areas. And to a significant degree, look at how this model shows places seeing 30 to 40 degree above average temperatures early next week. As early as Now, listen to what he's saying, and it's so true. It's like we went from this extreme cold, and my people in the Northwest and Northeast and the Midwest know exactly what I'm saying. It's like we went from this extreme cold, and then boom, we all shot up and it got hot again. In in the end of December going into January, it's like, can you say chemtrails? Can you say weather manipulation? Because there ain't no way in hell that temperatures drop as low as they did, as fast as they did within the 24-hour period. Because that's what a bomb cyclone is. It drops 24 millibars in a less than a 24-hour period. Which is insane. And then, of course, they called it the once-in-a-lifetime storm. But listen to how he's going to break down. And, oh, this guy's this guy's good. He's going to break down how everything is heating up and how this is actually going to cause another catastrophic storm very soon, possibly even next week. And one of the target areas that this storm is really hitting is in uh, middle Louisiana area in that part of the south. So listen up is Monday, January 2nd, we could see highs in the 60s, 70s, and 80s across a lot of the southeastern U.S., and those warmer temperatures are going to try to push their way into the northeast as we head deeper into the week. I mean, look at that, 60 degrees in Detroit on the 3rd. But even before this big warm wave takes over, temperatures on New Year's Day are going to be much higher than they were on Christmas Day in this region. Check this out. The high temp in Boston on Christmas Day was 27 degrees, and on New Year's Day, it's going to be 56. In Nashville, Tennessee, it was 30 31 degrees on Christmas Day, and it'll be 65 on New Year's. And then take a look at the difference in New Orleans, where it'll be 75 on New Year's Day, which is a lot nicer than the 45 they were at on Christmas Day. All this sounds really great, but it comes at a cost. Whenever we get a big, warm heat wave bubble like this that forms up in the east in the winter, a blast of cold air almost always tries to knock it back into the Atlantic. When that happens, the clashing of warm and cold air can create some downright scary storms. And it really looks like that's 
going to happen next week as we have the warmth in place. Cool air will be coming in to push it away. But one of the many other things we need for a big severe weather outbreak is moisture. And oh boy, do we have moisture to talk about. Some of you in the West are probably going to appreciate at least some of what I'm getting ready to tell you. Take a look at the latest drought monitor. Okay, it's dry out there. But here's the thing. The snow, the rain, the precipitation that you're looking for is coming, but it might actually be too much. Starting earlier this week and continuing into the foreseeable future, we are going to see intermittent rivers of water in the air pour onto the West Coast from the Pacific Ocean. This is going to work similarly to the Siberian Express that brought all that cold air into the country around Christmas. But this time, it's warm, moist Pacific air that's being chucked into the lower 48. Meteorologists literally call these intense moisture flows atmospheric rivers. Imagine this big low-pressure center in the Pacific Ocean is a Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack mud tire. Now, imagine the tropical moisture in the atmosphere over the Pacific is mud. Now, buddy, hit the gas. And not only are we going mudding, but the counterclockwise flow splatters this moisture across the West Coast. And especially along the mountain ranges, it condenses and falls as rain or snow. And once again, these atmospheric river events are going to continue to happen on a consecutive basis through early January. One of the bigger ones will occur this weekend and bring an additional six to eight inches of rain to the Bay Area and several feet of snow to the Sierras. So if we take a look at the GFS all the way out to January 13th, we're looking at some precipitation totals over 20 inches and a widespread chunk of the western U.S. getting over two to four inches. I promise this is going to lead to some pretty significant flash flooding and mudslides. So if you live in an area that's prone to this, please be prepared for that. Oh, and also over the next 350 hours or so, some of the mountaintops out here in California could see over 10 feet of snow. So all this moisture in the west is so relentless that a good chunk of it is going to go right over the Rocky Mountains and into the central plains. When that moisture combines with the warm air coming out of the south and the cooler air filtering in from the north, and we really start to see the counterclockwise action start to take place in our deepening storm system, things are going to get even wilder. First of all, up north, we're going to have another blizzard with strong winds and Winter weather wars. You hear I say we're going to have another blizzard. Now, this was this was a couple of days ago, um, actually before New Year's, um, but or actually right after New Year's. But what he's talking about, it's already starting to happen. That's like this thing is very accurate on what he's explaining. And this, I believe, has to do a lot with the seating in the clouds and the chemtrails and this chemtrail campaign that is being forced upon us or really being forced upon the atmosphere is intensifying as we speak and i truly believe that these weather manipulation that's going on for this winter and why it's becoming such a dark look at all the deaths this is just another form of depopulation And this is just another one of those inconveniences, or should I say one of those severe inconveniences that I talked about that we were going to be dealing with all throughout the year 2023. So what I suggest is the same thing I'm doing. Don't get too comfortable in 2023. Keep yourself, stay uncomfortable so that when you experience the uncomfortability that's going to come from these different types of governments and all the other different shenanigans that they're pulling on us, it's not going to be overwhelming to you because you're you living a life of uncomfortability. So no matter how bad it gets, it ain't going to be that bad to you. And you'll find a way to overcome it because you're aware and prepared. And heavy snow. But down south, it's looking like another dangerous, severe weather situation is about to unfold. Of course, it's not just me saying this. The official meteorological powerhouse known as the Storm Prediction Center is sounding the alarm by highlighting this area under a rare day five risk for severe weather. They're also already. And that area is in the south towards uh, the, the Louisiana area. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, all my peoples in Louisiana. Definitely watch out for this because it looks like you guys are going to be hit pretty hard.
Already talking about the potential for tornadoes, which is once again pretty rare for a day five forecast in the winter. The reason for this confidence is because of the warm sector associated with this storm. Just look at the widespread juicy air here with dew points in the 60s all the way up into the Ohio Valley on Monday. Now watch that warm, moist air get kicked out of the way by cool, dry air being forced in by our deepening storm system. Along this line is where the storms are going to be. Go ahead and throw in some 60 to 70 knot winds just above the surface and you've got a recipe for disaster if storms can continue into the night. And right now, it does look like some of those storms are going to do just that with potential severe weather happening into the morning hours on Tuesday. This kind of setup is known for producing tornadoes out there, so it's an additional concern that we might really have to worry about naders in the dark. Remember, we're still five days out. We're going to know so much more about the timing and exact hazards with this storm as we get closer, but right now, it looks generally concerning for the entire affected area. But another Another thing that I think is kind of being overlooked here is the flooding concern. Not just in the West, where yes, it's going to be a huge problem, but the leftover moisture and combined amplification from the Gulf of Mexico will lead to some pretty big rain totals across a lot of the eastern U.S. as well. Basically, if you live anywhere in the orange or the red or the purple on this map and you live in a flood-prone area, please be weather aware as we go into the new year. Also, of course, if you're in the yellow on this map, be double extra weather aware, whether you're in a tornado-prone area. And to all my listeners in Florida, believe it or not, you would think that we were going to get hit pretty hard, but not as much as the upper northeast opposed to the southeast. So not saying that Florida is going to be in the clear, but that that rainfall is not going to be as severe as it's going to be in other places that eventually is going to turn into snow because of, you know, freezing temperatures area or not. And I'm not kidding. Being prepared is one of the most important things you can do in a situation like this. I often say, don't be scared, be prepared, because when you're calm, cool, and collected, it's easier to make decisions and ultimately get yourself and your family to shelter in an emergency situation. A lot of you watching this are already prepared, especially if you're watching me. But what about when things happen at night when you're trying to go to sleep? And what about when the power goes out and when cell phone towers go down? In those situations, I highly recommend getting a NOAA weather radio if if you want to take the next step towards being as prepared as you possibly can be these things are and i love what he said it's better to be scared than it is better to be uh instead of being scared it's better to be prepared and like he said if you're watching me you're prepared and i, I you know i would love to take that from him but i'm not but i was thinking like if you're listening to the network of awareness then you are aware and you are you are you have an inclination on how to go about being prepared if you listen to me let's go awesome and they tune into your local national weather service and, and give you the latest alerts whether you have power or not they run off batteries or you can plug them into the wall if you want to and you'll be able to listen to that and it will wake you up in the middle of the night if there's a tornado warning or a flash flood warning this thing is going to scream at you we got a bunch of different versions on the website shop this one is like it's got a flashlight on it you can crank it to power it you don't even have to worry about having charged batteries and it charges your phone i mean like there's just a lot of different use cases for these but I think that these should be as prominent in houses as like carbon monoxide detectors or fire detectors. These things save lives. So go on over to shopryanhall.com. There's a link in the description and get you one of these things right now. And we're going to ship it to you as fast as we can. But while you're waiting, go ahead and go over your tornado action plan or your flash flood action plan with your family. That way, when this thing goes off, you and everybody in your household knows what you're going to do. And I promise your odds of getting through a bad situation exponentially increase as long as you you do those things so thank you for watching and thank you for supporting you don't have to buy this from me you can get it at target but if you want to get it from me obviously it helps me out shop ryanhall.com a super huge shout out to all so there you have it people you know is is better to be prepared than scared you know like it's so true because i've talked about it and you're going to hear me talk about it throughout this year for as long as I can, most high willing, is that the shenanigans, the propaganda is only going to get far worse for the year 2023. And I just have this compelling in my spirit, this intuition that things are going to get really bad. Um, We're already seeing it. I mean, we saw this storm come in. 
for Christmas. People died. You heard you all the people, and I, I believe it's way more than 83 people, but let's just say it was 83 people. It's really bad. And, you know, they had the looting in Buffalo. A lot of stores got ransacked. So that that's just a precursor to the behavior, right? Like Sister Soraya Thompson wrote, the young lady that wrote the article in the uh, BOCC newsletter, that, you know, these people are lovers of themselves. And when any time there is some type of turbulent times or some type of chaos, people just become savages. And that's something that we are literally going to have to be prepared for if we ever fall into a situation that can fall into some type of anarchy or civil unrest or just some type of buffoonery and low level savage behavior that we would have to be prepared for in, in order to defend ourselves because most people in this country just like to take something instead of earning it for themselves. Or they're always looking to get over. And, and that's just the reality of people in this country. And that's just a precursor. But it's just very important to be aware of these things that are happening. Because, like I said before, it, 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 we've never seen a time where propaganda was coming at us from so many different angles all at the same time. But yet, here we are. We're in those times. So it is what it is. So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to play some music real quick, and then I'm going to head on out of here. So, I hope that you enjoyed the, the show up to this point. So, let's play some music, and then, of course, we'll be right back, and we'll close out the show. And you know how we do. You tuned into the Network of Awareness, baby, and I'm glad that you're tuning into this live show if you had time to do so tonight. And if not, you can always download the show from your favorite listening platform. Let's go. You are now tuned in to the network of awareness. Chasing the high labyrinth mind, numbing the pain. Stuck in the cycle, I wish I had clothes. 
I look at my wounds, open is torture, but it's too soon. Another excuse, I was addicted. Capital E, evicted out my own body, had no control. Passenger seat, I was out for a ride and I noticed that the ride won't end. Had to jump out that car, took a leap of faith to attach, had me crash. Got up leaning, and I got out scarred. Most I saved my life, he cut them demons down. He healed me all around. So I'ma tell you right now, this world ain't worth it, no. Those drugs ain't worth it, no. Don't lose your purpose, whoa. Yes, I'm talking to you, children. Listen to your parents now. While you have them, especially hold fast to their words when they talking about Messiah. Consider this a warning now. You are now tuned in to the network of awareness. To the network of awareness.
For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. I'm just trying to be first of my friends. Demons all around, they trying to get me to slip. Pray to the living God, I need you to be my defense. Closing my eyes, bow my head, I'm ready to win. I'm just trying to be burnt of my sins. Demons all around, they trying to get me to slip. Pray to the living God, I need you to be my defense. Closing my eyes, bow my head, I'm ready to win. Can't go back and I feel that pain and it hurts like that You know when you cry to the most high Can't find the words but he come down fast He saved me alive Remember the day that I buried my grave and I wanted to die The stress and the trauma is hard to survive I feel it again but this time it's different I learn from mistakes I'm running the race and door the pace I feel like I can fly but then I got hit depressed the evil is watching my steps and I know why We telling our people we're paying Just look in the mirror before it's too late The Lord on the way, he coming with fire, I'm hitting the gas The Lord on the way, he coming with fire, I'm hitting the gas Old man did a dash, so I can't go back Remember last wife looking around, cause you might turn back Eyes run narrow path, we living in water Surrounding each other, protect one another, we follow the land I swear I'm fighting, 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 fighting Lord, I'm bleeding, 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 oh I swear I'm fighting, 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 fighting. Lord, purge me, purge me, purge me, yo. I'm just trying to be purged of my sins. Demons all around, they're trying to get me to slip. Pray to the living God, I need you to be my defense. Closing my eyes, bow my head, I'm ready to win. I'm just trying to be purged of my sins. Demons all around, they're trying to get me to slip. Pray to the living God, I need you to be my defense. Closing my eyes, bow my head, I'm ready to win. I'm just trying to be purged of my sins for the last time, for the last time, yeah. I'm just trying to be purged of my sins for the last time, for the last time, yeah. I gotta go harder, we holding the sword. Stand with my brothers, we standing in war. Moving together, move on, on a accord. We on the road to the kingdom. Don't look back, stay focused till the king comes. I'm just trying to be purged of my sins. Demons all around, they trying to get me to slip. Pray to the living God, I need you to be my defense. Closing my eyes, bow my head, I'm ready to win. I'm just trying to be purged of my sins. Demons all around, they trying to get me to slip. Pray to the living God, I need you to be my defense. Closing my eyes, bow my head, I'm ready to win.
emotional My whole life is on a Ferris wheel And it's going round and around They don't know how many times I done cried They don't know I'm just saying, y'all Six hundred dollars is what they give us Ooh, I'm just saying How many times I'm on the side of the road Trying to catch my breath, feel me? I'm just saying, y'all I'm just saying You may think I'm in my feelings I'm not in my feelings I just need healing I don't wanna self-destroy I don't wanna cry I don't wanna find myself dead last You give a splash when they hit the surface Only when tears drops fall Only when they fall I've been writing all day long A humble man, I am With pen and shit, a pen and pain I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just I'm not in my feeling. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just Sometimes, Sometimes I get emotional My whole life is on a Ferris wheel And it's going round and around They don't know how many times I done cried They don't know I'm just saying, y'all Six hundred dollars is what they give us Ooh, I'm just saying How many times I'm on the side of the road Trying to catch my breath, feel me? I'm just saying, y'all I had to go to probate court I had three accounts against me When the judge called my name She read I don't even want to come I was shocked at the same time I want to let you know Y'all, your little hand is the real deal It ain't a problem he can't solve He the one that gon' have you back And he also will make sure you want to stand out I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just I'm not in my feeling. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just. Sometimes, Sometimes I get emotional. My whole life is on a Ferris wheel. And it's going round and around. They don't know how many times I done cried. They don't know. I'm just saying, y'all. Six hundred dollars is what they give us. Ooh, I'm just saying, y'all. How many times I'm on the side of the road trying to catch my breath. Feel me? I'm just saying, y'all. Life is an unpredictable and amazing journey. Our ever-changing conditions within today's society and the constant new trends influencing cultures can become overwhelming, to say the least. But no worries. The Network of Awareness podcast radio show brings peace of mind in these challenging times. Follow us on your favorite podcast listening app and join our community of Network of Awareness at networkofawareness.com. When you live in the present, there is always an opportunity for a new beginning. And people, don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel because the light is and always will be within you so light up the tunnel and find your way through the darkness peace love and light and all praises to the most high all praises to the messiah barakatha people